I would like to call on Mrs. Ifama Williams to share her story with us all. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you this afternoon. Um, Vanessa, can you confirm that you can hear me well? I can, well. Fantastic. So, um, Auntie Funke is very dear to my heart. And, um, I'm very proud of the work she's doing with um, Vivian Fowler College. And I'm going to be speaking to you ladies today about confidence. It has many meanings, different meanings to different people. But to start out, I'd like for one or two people to tell me what confidence means to them. It's a very, very broad and a very interesting topic. And what we're going to try and do is answer a few questions and then tie it to how we can apply it to our every, everyday lives. I'm very for, you know, being able to apply the things we hear or the things we speak about in our everyday lives. That's the whole point of having conversations like this, seminars like this, you know, so I'd like for anyone to tell me what confidence means to them. What does confidence mean to you? Anyone? Any takers? Um, confidence to me is being unapologetically you. Okay. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Um, um, I think that being confident means um, being yourself without caring what other people think. Okay. Okay, so in a sense, that is correct. Um, but let's correct the notion because as the beautiful ladies and gentlemen that we are, we must care, not exactly care, you know, to the point where what other people, other people's opinions affect us, but we must care to the point where we respect other people's feelings. So confidence indeed is being unapologetically, unapologetically, apologetically you, but still laced with humility, such that after you leave the room, your presence becomes a memory. So it was the late great Maya Angelou who said, people forget what you say, people forget what you do, but people forget, never forget how you make them feel. There's a very thin line between confidence and arrogance. And where we are now in the world, a lot of us young people, permit me to call myself young, a lot of us young people are dealing with the issue of confidence. Let me let you in on a big secret. Almost every actor you see or every stage personality has butterflies in their stomach before they get on stage. So for me, I'm a public speaker. Would you believe that every time I'm about to give a speech, even now, the lovely ladies of Vivian Fowler College, I have butterflies in my stomach. I doubt my ability. My confidence shakes. So understand something. Confidence is something that you can develop. But so that we can apply it in our everyday lives, particularly with the onset of social media and the visual illusions that we see and people faking it until they make it. I want to charge you with something. Believe in yourself. Set a goal for yourself and know that confidence has a look, it has a behavior, and it has a sound. I'll say that again. Confidence has a look, it has a behavior, it has a sound. Confidence is your most powerful, your strong. Okay. Confidence is your strongest communication tool. And so very quickly, the questions I want us to answer today, we've answered what is confidence. The other questions I want us to you know, examine, how do we get or build it? What happens in uncertain cases? when we are anxious or when we are embarrassed or if we're faced with a scandal? How do we rebuild confidence again? And why is confidence necessary? So how do we get confidence? 
simple trick like maths. Always remember, it is how you look, it is how you behave, it is how you sound. So for how you look, forget trends, but look at your own physical attributes and dress to enhance your best features and conceal your flaws because no human being is perfect. For how you sound, confidence is a great listener. Confidence is conversational. Confidence listens to the other person because confident might, confidence might learn something from the other person. So I'm speaking about confidence as a person now. So you are confidence. Confidence is humble. Arrogance shows through. A confident person is relaxed. A confident person is a willing and eternal learner. So that's how confidence sounds. How does confidence behave? Confidence is accommodating and again, willing to learn and share and hear from the world. Although you filter the things that you hear. But what I want you to go away with is remember, no two people are the same. Set your mind and your sight on your goal about yourself. Believe in yourself. I know you've heard this many times. So the next thing is, how do we build confidence? It takes practice. It takes practice and it's something that you grow into. But once you remember that confidence has a look, it has a behavior, and it has a sound, and you continue to practice these things daily, right? It becomes a habit. There's a book I recommend to you young ladies. It's a book titled Atomic Habits, which simply says that you make a change by making small and tiny changes, or you form a habit by making small and tiny changes every day. The next question is what happens in cases of uncertainty or embarrassment? Everybody makes mistakes. Don't beat yourself up. Do not fall prey to bullies. No one's life is perfect. Very, very far from it. Dust yourself up and try again. A confident person apologizes. A confident person reflects on the mistakes they've made. A confident person engages in conversation with people who are older, who are more experienced, perhaps in life or in a particular field to gain more knowledge, to know how to deal with a particular situation. Dark moments. After the heavier, heaviest storm comes the most beautiful rainbow. So remember that even if the mistake is yours, that's why it is called life and you will get through it, you'll get out of it and the sun will shine for you again. How do you rebuild confidence after a negative um, situation or after you know, a scandal or after an embarrassment? Simple, laugh at yourself. When you laugh at yourself and you see that this too will pass, nobody else can make fun of you or take advantage of your situation. Laugh at the situation knowing that it'll pass and hold your head up high. It takes me to my last point. Why is confidence necessary? It is your most powerful tool after integrity. Confidence wields influence. When you walk into a room and you are relaxed, receptive, smiling, you see people can perceive confidence. So if you walk into a room and you're adjusting yourself and you're looking down and that is the way people will treat you. But if you walk in head held high, and I'm not saying with an attitude because that's a thin line between confidence and arrogance. So it's about maintaining a balance, remaining humble, being receptive in whatever society, community or gathering you find yourself in. Allow the other person speak. Being a great listener, sharing when you can, and just generally being cordial. Remember, ladies, no, Rome wasn't built in one day. People did not acquire confidence overnight. Every tiny change that is consistently repeated becomes a habit. 
and even the most, the seemingly most successful and most confident have butterflies in their stomach. It's okay to make mistakes every now and again. Failure is a very integral part of success. Don't ever let, let anyone make you feel less than you are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Ifama, for that enlightening talk on confidence and the difference between confidence and arrogance. I'm fortunate enough to have gained more than enough tips on how I would go far in life. For that, I say thank you. My pleasure. I would now like to